about it. Leonard Skinner's biggest life and death turning point was still 13 months into an unforeseeable future. But a relentless 300 shows a year, dubbed the Torture Tour, had original Leonard Skinner members dropping like flies, and album sales had likewise. Never a top 40 singles band that nevertheless didn't stop their record company president from expecting three Sweet Home Alabama soundalikes from Leonard Skinner's February 1976 studio album called Gimme Back My Bullets. By midsummer 1976, three things were pretty evident. America's self-conscious bicentennial was entering the history books, even as the wrecking ball was heading down Peachtree towards the Fox Theater. Two, a double live album from Peter Frampton was rewriting the record books of the music industry. And three, Leonard Skinner was selling more tickets than Give Me Back My Bullets albums. Leonard Skinner needed a recording that would capture their lightning in a bottle. The Fox Theater in Atlanta needed a lightning rod to make it a cause celeb. On the 25th anniversary of the release of Leonard Skinner's double live album, One More From The Road, founding guitarist Gary Rossington remembers. Actually, we played three nights, and we know all this. It was to save the Fox, too. We got a Grammy that year for the Humanitarian Award for saving the Fox Theater from being uh, torn down and made a parking lot. We did that show there, and we decided to record it with Tom Dowd, and but, and he wanted to do three shows so we could keep it live and not have to overdub a lot because he'd done uh, Wheels of Fire with Cream and he'd done Live at the Fillmore with the Almonds. Brothers, yeah. And those were the two best live right. albums we'd ever heard uh, except for Frampton's right then. Those were the two biggest and best albums ever live. So we got with him, and he just kind of guided us through that and told us to play three shows. And that's why some of the songs are different. We had a different set list each night. And we just kept the, you know, we did one song, some songs one night and some the next, and we played them a little different. Saturday Night Special boldly presaged the handgun debate in America a quarter century later. By the time of Leonard Skinner's fourth studio effort, called Gimme Back My Bullets, Original drummer Bob Burns and third guitarist Ed King had both quit abruptly. Five months after release, it was apparent that Give Me Back My Bullets, the album, was loaded with blanks. In his final national radio interview, Leonard Skinner's bass player, Leon Wilkinson, follows guitarist Gary Rossington. Yeah, I think Bullets was just a time we were changing producers, and we was just Alan and myself uh, on guitars. Ed was gone, and it was just a kind of a rushed record we had to do. And making it Capricorn, we were kind of rushed. We were touring and doing that record at the same time as touring. It was just a hard one. And that was the least successful album. We were just facing like a, a brick in the road or a. Uh, run into a brick wall kind of thing, uh, but the the songs are great on her. But like Gary's saying, you know, it was it was just him and Alan in the guitar part. So I think it was real noticeable that that three guitar distinction was kind of missing on that album. Well, I remember uh, back then, and I guess still today, you have to do a certain many albums or, or CDs that you're you know you're signed to with a record company, and we had and and those days we had. Uh, do a record each year. Uh, Ed King had just quit, and we'd just gotten Steve, and it was time to do a new record. So instead of not uh, stopping for anything and continuing to tour and trying to write a record that we weren't ready for, we just decided to do a live one. And with Tom Dowd, he had just done Give Me Back My Bullets with us. We thought that we had the perfect guy because his record would do it, you know, track record yeah, track of doing record. live records. So we wanted to do it live to show people what we sounded like live, that we weren't like a, a band. A lot of bands back in those days would sound real good in the studio, but in a live when you heard them, they would be terrible. Same as today, I guess. And so we wanted to show everybody that live what we sounded like, that if you came to hear us live, that it would sound like the record, you know. Coming up next, we'll find out which member of Leonard Skinner was so new that he didn't know half of the songs they performed. I'm Redbeard, in the studio, serving one more from the road. Gary Rossington, in the studio, from Leonard Skinner. Thanks, Gary. I'm Redbeard, focusing on Leonard Skinner's triple platinum live album, One More From The Road, the 25th anniversary deluxe edition. 
Background singer Cassie Gaines has successfully introduced her guitar-playing brother, Steve Gaines, into Leonard Skinner only three gigs before it was time to roll tape for the Fox Theater recording in Atlanta. Gary Rossington follows Leon Wilkerson. Steve yeah. Gaines was just getting worked into the band then, too. He hadn't been with us a long no, time. No, a lot of songs. He didn't know. He was only with us a week or two. And, uh, Re he had to in sit my living out. room, yeah. I remember. He had to sit out and then turn his guitar down and fake like he was playing. And he didn't even play on a few songs. And then some he did play that he knew, you know. Well, he hadn't learned them. He could have played and, and jammed on them, but we weren't that kind of band. We yeah. wanted it tight. So we made him turn his guitar down. We didn't want him to look goofy, so we just said, pretend like you're playing. If you don't know it, but turn your damn guitar down. And he kind of would laugh, and he'd yeah. act like he was playing away with the <laughs> guitar down. And That's then right. the one songs he knew, he'd play with us, and he did us some solos and everything, but... uh. It was really kind of funny, you know. Yeah. He got enough in there to be noticed. And yeah. it wasn't long before Ronnie would be uh, telling the audience to watch out. He'd sick of on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God yeah. bless Steve Gaines, man. Road. To get a partisan crowd of fans to cheer them on for this all-important recording, why not stage the concert in Leonard Skinner's hometown of Jacksonville, Florida? Well, for one, Skinner had failed to sell out their previous appearance there. It seems that lead singer, lyricist Ronnie Van Zandt felt that his notorious reputation in Jacksonville had finally caught up with him. Gary Rossington speaks for Ronnie. He just always felt like he was an outlaw because being from the west side of town and fighting and uh, the reputation he had in the early days was like an outlaw. And then, I don't know, we were just kind of the bad boys in Jacksonville and a lot of people didn't like us. And then when disco came in, like he says in the song about the pretty boys and their disco shoes and stuff, that was in our era in this early 70s and stuff. That was disco versus rock was a big thing, so yeah. we hated it. And all the bands and all the record stations, and you remember this, was playing disco and not us. So we really hated them, and he just kind of, that was Jacksonville. They hated us in the disco days because we were a southern rock band with long hair uh, and showing up at these clubs and and dance places like that, and they were dancing and doing dance fever, you know, Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. It wasn't mixing, so he just kind of wrote his feelings down like that. But he felt like that, I'm sure, yeah. He always did. Yeah, I'll never forget I, hearing about um, when Gary and Ronnie were going to approach Alan about joining the band. A uh, story I heard, he was riding his bicycle, and uh, they were driving a car, and he was out, he was h hauling tail on that bike because he thought Ronnie was going to beat him up. <laughs> yeah, we ch had to chase him up a tree that day. <laughs> Get him to join the band. I threw his bike down and ran out in the woods and climbed an oak tree. And we had to <laughs> call him down from this tree, swearing we weren't going to hurt him. We just wanted to talk. It's not that Leonard Skinner hadn't played for some time until July 1976 at the Fox Theater in Atlanta. That's Tuesday's Gone. Up next, a tribute to original bass player Leon Wilkerson. I'm Redbeard, in the studio for the 25th anniversary deluxe edition of Leonard Skinner's One More from the Road. Oh, this is Leon Wilkerson of Leonard Skinner. <laughs> I'm Redbeard. So sad to report that that voice has been silenced forever. Leon Wilkerson, the top hat wearing, sunglasses bespectacled, original bass player for Leonard Skinner, who did this interview only last November 2000. Passed away July 28th, just outside his hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. In his final national radio interview, Leon Wilkerson recalled some of the histrionics of the Jacksonville music mafia. I grew up with Billy Powell over in the West Side, and uh, the Van Zandt's oldest daughter, Joanne, um, was a neighbor. She was married to a, a guy named Bill Morris. And I remember uh, Ronnie used to work for. Uh, that company, Bill Morris All Supplies, but he had like hair down to his collars, you know, and was delivering auto parts to all these rednecks and everything. And uh, but anyway, basically, uh, I grew up with Billy, and we got into the. I was in school band and everything, and uh, I got to, we got, we got the Beatles came out and the Rolling Stones, and so we were all getting into that. And uh, you know, one percent would play over at a teen club, 
right in the vicinity. So that's when I started getting hip to them. And I, I, the first band I was ever in was uh, with Donnie Van Zant. His first band we were called the Collegiates. Hmm. And and I remember they kept asking me if I've ever heard Bob Burns' band. You know, that's <laughs> what they, people were calling them. And I said, no, I haven't heard them yet. And then finally they played like a teen club over there. Me and Billy would go hear them and hang out and get to know them. And sure we all kind of went to school together. So, But anyway, that was in the west side part of Jacksonville, like I said, where we grew up. And I remember Jeff Carlisi uh, lived in between mine and Billy's houses, too. He was a guitarist from 38, so... Leon Wilkerson was the prodigal player of bass who actually bailed out of Leonard Skinner after Bob Dylan and Jimi Hendrix sideman and Blood, Sweat and Tears founder Al Cooper signed Leonard Skinner and proceeded to produce their first national release. Leon's new gig? Farm Best. Farm Best. Um, Foremost, th- wasn't it? It was Farm Best, Dairy Products, and then it changed to Flavor Rich. <laughs> 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 but I, that was only a six-month job, so but but luck, luckily Skinner came to my rescue. He was with us for a while, and he kind of got scared, and I think his parents got him scared. Saying, oh yeah, I had saying, a haunting premonition. Yeah, about he thought he would, after we the Yankee slicker came along, you know, we wouldn't maybe. make it, and we were not going to do good, and so all our parents back in those days were saying, y'all. Quit that band and get a real job. And you get know. your hair get cut. Get your hair cut and stuff. <laughs> My mother did it. Ronnie's parents, Lacey and Alan's parents, everybody. So it was just one of those scares. I think we all had them back then. We'd quit for a week or two and come back. And Leon just kind of found a cool job with free ice cream. So he stayed yeah. a while. Yeah, and I got paid every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Leon Wilkinson and Gary Rossington recalled Leonard Skinner's humble beginnings. Oh, yeah. We used to always collect Coke bottles and pop bottles yeah. uh, to get guitar strings or pay for gas to get, you know, around town. But for that, that particular... A, it was a survival tactic. Yeah. That particular time, uh, besides tickets and gas, you know, we had to get a little food and stuff. So we all collected Coke bottles mm-hmm. for two or three or four days, just driving around and walking around and riding our bikes around back mm-hmm. then, looking yeah. for bottles and collecting them. And you'd cash them in for three cents a bottle, you know. Yeah. And our ma- mails mostly contained of RC colas <laughs> and moon pies. Yeah. That's the way we you used know. to uh, change guitar strings, Alan and I and Leon. We'd always go collect co- Coke bottles. You'd get about 10 or 15 Coke bottles, and you could buy a new set of strings, see? Mm. We mixed this thing, or mixed it, and uh, was our sound man back then. They were our roadies. Billy Powell and Kevin Elson were our roadies, and then Kevin would do sound, too, and Billy just be our roadie. And so one, uh, this happened for a year or two, I guess, and we didn't know, even know he played piano. We just thought he was this goofy guy that carried our amps around. And one night we were playing at this, uh, it was, uh, I'll think of the name, Bayview High School. And it was behind Lakeshore where we all went to high school. And we were playing there one night. And after this show or after the gig, it was just a high school dance. It started raining so hard we couldn't load the equipment up. So we were all sit standing in the gym, the band and uh, Billy and Kevin, just waiting for the rain to quit so we could load up. And there was a piano there, and Billy just out of nowhere said, You know what? If I ever had to play Freebird, this is the way I'd play it. And started playing it, you know, just the way he plays it today. He'd already yeah. Uh, wrote his part for it, of it yeah. and played it beautiful for about five or ten minutes, and we were all crying and just going on. Oh, we couldn't believe it. And we fired him that night from being our roadie and hired him to be our piano player. <laughs> and the next gig, he played Freebird and played just two or three songs with us. That's all he'd play. Then he'd be the roadie. And every every gig, he'd be a, a half roadie, half keyboard man. Yeah. And then it kind of just uh, got it to where he was full keyboard. But that's his beginning. By original Leonard Skinner sound engineer and producer Kevin Elson on the 25th anniversary deluxe edition of One More from the Road. With the passing of original bass player Leon Wilkerson, there's one less street survivor. God bless him. I'm Redbeard, back in the studio after this. Think about it. Leonard